Another side effect of the coronavirus, pollution. More people are relying on single-use plastics, things like masks, gloves, and bottles of hand sanitizer, and they're ending up in the ocean. NBC News correspondent Ellison Barber reports from Boca Raton. All right, Charlie, bump it back. Keep coming. Just off the coast of Boca Raton, Alex Schultz is about to lead a different kind of pandemic recovery. I think I see a bottle up in there. Target acquired. We'll just cruise this rip. There's going to be all sorts of plastic in it. Since 2017, his company, 4Ocean, has pulled over 10 million pounds of trash from oceans and waterways. From water bottles to tires to grocery bags. But today, the trash they're finding is different. Face masks, we've been finding a lot of these lately in our coastal waters. Across the globe, an estimated 129 billion disposable face masks and 64 billion disposable gloves are now used every month, according to a study in environmental science and technology. And four ocean cleaning crews say they're finding it in the ocean by the thousands. It's, it's everywhere. It's Bali. It's Guatemala. It's Haiti. Masks are required all around the world, and, and people are using these single-use masks. They're coming out of these stores, they're getting to their car, and they're taking off the gloves, they're taking off the mask, and they're tossing them into these parking lots. And all these drains are leading to the oceans. COVID-19 is forcing all of us to change our behaviors in big, often necessary ways. But with all of the gloves, disposable food containers, and face masks, experts say all of this could get much worse, threatening marine ecosystems, harming marine life, and even contaminating our food supply. Every single year, plastic producers are manufacturing more and more plastic to meet the demand of consumers. And if we are not able to change our consumption habits, then the amount of plastic is going to continue to skyrocket. Got him? And at a time when we all feel the weight of the world on our shoulders, a person determined to save the oceans is asking for progress, not perfection. What exactly can people do and what should people be doing? Try and go for that reuse uh, lifestyle. If you have to end up using these things, it's okay. That's not a problem. We understand that that happens. But just make sure that it's deposited and, and thrown away properly. And if you can recycle it, recycle it with the necessary facilities. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo creating a task force to review any vaccine that the Trump administration approves. Cuomo says he's doing it because he doesn't trust the government. But today, the head of Health and Human Services promised the vaccine won't be rushed by politics. Here's part of Alex Azar's interview on Today. How worrisome is it to you that people fear politics and not science are dictating the vaccine development here? Savannah, I want to reassure you and the American people, politics will play no role whatsoever in the approval of a vaccine. There are many independent checks in this system that we have built in. First, there's an independent data and safety monitoring board that will determine even if we see data out of these trials according to pre-specified statistical plans. Then the drug companies will decide if the data meet their standards because they have their own ethical obligations. Then the FDA has published public transparent guidance of the tough standards they'll require for approval I, and they'll have a transparent external that? advisory committee. Yeah, let's stop yeah. right there on that FDA because there's some news on that. The FDA has signaled that it's going to tighten and, and make stricter its requirements for emergency approval for any vaccine. And then the president said yesterday he wasn't sure that it was actually up to the White House to decide and that he wasn't sure he would accept them. Do you think that the FDA should enact these stricter standards on the vaccine? So the guidance that matters is actually already out there. We put it out over a month and a half ago out of FDA. What FDA is looking at is just some additional uh, guidelines for the manufacturers who might come in for emergency approval. It's a fairly technical document. Do you support uh, it? It's well, we'll we'll look at it and determine if it if it's appropriate. But the guidance that matters is out there, and FDA is going to call these balls and strikes according to clear standards that FDA has. That is out there. The manufacturers know what's expected. The statistical requirements, the safety, the efficacy. There's no political interference. The FDA is going to call those balls and strikes at the career level there, and the American people should be reassured. We stand for patient safety. Everything's going to be by science, data, and rule of law. A group of doctors working to register as many voters as possible and also keep them safe during this pandemic. Dr. Manisha Sharma is one of those doctors. She's a family medicine physician and the co-founder of Vote Health 2020. Dr. Sharma, so great to have you with us. Could you tell us more about what you're doing this election season? 
Yeah, sure. So we are actually Vote Health 2020. Um, we're a group of nonpartisan um, healthcare workers who are really concerned about our peers and our patients um, and our communities and getting people to register to vote. Um, we just want people to register to vote uh, this November safely, and we want people to know that that registering to vote is getting their voices heard in in you know the policies that are set for our communities. A lot of folks are nervous about mailing in their ballots with all the postal issues and politics lately. What advice do you have for voters who still plan to head to the polls on November 3rd? What should they do to stay safe? Yeah, so, you know, we really want folks to understand that health is everyone's business, right? It's every single human being's priority. And you can't work if you're not healthy. You can't go to school if you aren't healthy. You can't travel if you're not healthy. And elected officials, we know, don't listen to people. Uh, they don't listen to people who don't vote. So what we ask for folks to do are a few things. First, those who are going to the polls this year, um, it's great. And number one, encourage your community, um, your community, your friends, your families to vote because we want them to get their voices heard. Second, um, in, if you can, try to get them to register to vote. Um, you can do that actually on our website, VoteHealth2020.com, and get them to vote. Um, if you are heading to their polls, we'd like you to think about needing to plan ahead a little bit this year. Um, and so what we'd like to do is say that if you want, you can still get have time um, to get your ballot, your absentee ballot, and have that mailed in. Um, there are people who are um, in your communities who are actually wanting to drive people to the ballot box if they don't have transportation. So I would call your elected um, election boards to actually find out who's sort of organizing those things in your communities. And if you decide that you're going to go to a polling station, what we ask is for folks to think of through a safe voting plan. Mask up, stay socially distant, um, wash your hands before and after your um, voting, use hand sanitizer. Um, we want people to know that we are concerned about their, um, their plans. And what we are wanting to do is help people come up with those types of plans that make it work for them and their families. Let's talk about the impact yeah. COVID-19 is having on minorities in our country. According to the CDC, two thirds of the children in the U.S. who have died of the coronavirus were either black, Hispanic or Native American. This pandemic has laid bare so many of the socioeconomic and health care injustices in our country. And it's a pandemic that does not look like it's going away soon. How do we course correct this? What can we do uh, right now to, to improve these statistics so that six months from now, we're not still seeing minorities get sick and die at such alarming rates? Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing, right? Is that COVID really highlighted exact and highlighted all of the things that are just broken in our healthcare system. We know that um, you know people of color and families and children of color have been dying at disproportionate rates pre-COVID. COVID just made it so much more uh, highlighted, and it's still atrocious. So what we're what we need to do to course correct is actually understand that this is structural. Um, the structure of our society for health was built broken. So it never actually, um, you know, really was designed to really think through resiliency in communities to be healthy. So at this point in time, this is our opportunity to actually um, get our voices heard. So if you are worried about your communities not having grocery stores to feed your community, if you are worried about not having green spaces, safe spaces, having access to health care, all of these things actually are a part of health. And so we need to redefine health as really thinking about the policies that affect people's health, um, where they breathe, where they work, play, uh, pray. Um, and, you know, and so this is actually a way to think through course correction, is thinking about health in all policies. And the first step to do that is getting your voice heard. Again, elected officials don't listen to people who don't vote. And so this is our chance to get our voices heard in, in society. I want to also stress that physicians are also part of the problem. We don't vote. Um, and more than anything, this year, especially with COVID, has shown that, um, that, that people are listening to our voices. So we need to also be a part of the process in getting our voices heard. And this is a way and a chance to get um, to hold democracy accountable. Dr. Sharma, I can't thank you enough for coming on. These are serious issues, but you deal with them with such uh, positivity and enthusiasm. It is great to see and wonderful to talk to you. Thank you for having me and please vote. <laughs> 
Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.